It's very common to get confused between the stuff that gives off the radiation and the radiation itself. A sparkler is a good analogy. The sparkler itself is like the radioactive stuff. The sparks are like the radiation. The radioactive stuff, or source, has a form. It can be a solid, like a rock, or dust, or a liquid, or a gas. Since it's stuff, it lasts, it sticks around for a long time. And it can move from place to place. You could carry it somewhere, or dust or gas might be blown by the wind. As the sparkler gives off sparks, it runs out of its ability to sparkle, but it doesn't disappear, though it does change. In the same way radioactive stuff doesn't disappear, it just runs out of its ability to emit radiation. Alpha and beta particles are like the sparks. They go very fast, but only last a tiny fraction of a second. They don't go very far, and it's easy to block them. And most importantly, they don't make other things sparkly. In the same way, radiation doesn't make the things it hits radioactive. Just like radiation, the sparks are pretty harmless unless you let a lot of them hit you. Gamma radiation is a bit like the light from the sparkler. It gets dimmer the further away it is, and it gets dimmer the more stuff you put in the way. Because the source and the radiation are completely different, you shouldn't talk about a cloud of radiation when you mean a cloud of radioactive dust or gas. The precautions that you take are different too. The source is only hazardous because of the radiation it gives off, so you want to stop it moving about and ending up somewhere where it doesn't belong. This normally means keeping a source in a container and, if you're going to dispose of it, making sure it's in the form of a solid that can't dissolve in water. To reduce the hazard from the radiation, you want to reduce how much hits you. You can normally do this pretty easily by keeping your distance, putting something in the way, this is called shielding, and reducing your exposure time. We'll find out more about dangers and risks in Lesson 7.